This is an experiment. I have been wondering for the longest time, what do I do on YouTube? I create shorts for other channels and I put them on here, but I don't want people to be seeing the same content on every channel. So I want to do something a little bit different on YouTube. So I've been thinking vlogs and this will give me an opportunity to show you what I'm doing in a day, show you what DIY I'm doing. This is kind of what I do on Instagram. I'll do like daily, um, just like short snippets of what I've been doing, because that's a much easier way to capture all of the mistakes that get made and how I solve them. Um, and of course, that goes down really well with if you're one of the people that follow me on Instagram. Loads of people follow my stories. Um, but of course, they disappear after 24 hours and there's nothing left. And there's nowhere really that's good to sort of save those except the highlights. So I thought, wouldn't it be good if there was somewhere that I could actually do, uh, I was going to say daily vlogs. I, I don't yet know what I can commit to, but I'm thinking daily, at least weekly, vlogs on what I've been doing, updates on DIYs. I've done some really cool stuff this uh, this weekend that I'd like to update you on. I did take some video, but of course, <laughs> it's all vertical still because my brain cannot process doing it this way. This feels really weird for me. So um, this is a little bit of an experiment. I, I need to work out what kind of content on YouTube is going to be interesting for people, what kind of stuff that I might also like to share stuff that isn't going to take a million years to produce because obviously it takes a really long time to edit videos. Um, so hopefully, like any sort of content you're creating, the first will always be the uh, the worst video you ever make. So <laughs> let me show you in the next few clips what I've been up to this weekend because it has been super, super fun. On Saturday, I spent five hours travelling from my house in Bristol up to Liverpool. I was travelling to Craig Phillips' house because he was hosting an event in his workshop with Wagner, who are the spray painting company, to teach a whole bunch of creators how to use spray guns. Now, this was really helpful for me because I've used spray guns in the past and not very successfully. My first ever follow along project was some cupboards that I had in my office. I painted it red and when I took off my goggles, it looked like I was still wearing them. So after that, I kind of thought, well, it seems like spray guns are a little bit rubbish, so I'm not going to bother using them again. But it was just the way that I was using them. I wasn't quite using it right. So this was a really useful experience. But this event was super fun for a number of reasons. First and foremost, look how cool Craig's workshop is. <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. That was another fantastic thing about this weekend. I got to meet loads of other creators. And keep in mind that these are people that I've been chatting to on social media for years. I text these people, I do Zoom calls with them, but I've never met them in person. So this was us getting some instruction on how to do it properly. And my main takeaways is that I was holding the spray gun far too far away from the wall. They said about five centimetres, 15 centimetres is ideal. And when you hold it further away, you get loads of spray back, which is exactly what was happening to me when I painted my cupboards red. We all got a chance to use the spray guns. This was me doing a seat. As you can tell, I got my very serious face on. This was another thing that I learned. If you actually change the nozzle at the front to different angles, the spray comes out differently. This is what they taught me. If you want to do it side to side, that's the angle it needs to be at. If you want to do it up and down, that's the angle it needs to be at. And what you just saw me doing with that chair was at this angle, and it makes the spray more narrow, and it makes it easier to do the detailing on things like that chair. I've actually only just noticed that it even shows you where, this, where the spray is this is the uh, the angle that it comes out. <laughs> That's funny. They also showed me that if you wind this back, it means that the handle is closer to here, the trigger is closer to here, and there's less distance for it to go, and if there's less distance, less comes out, so it's a better way of getting control over how much is coming out. Let me see if I can undo it. See, as I undo, it gets a little bit closer to the handle. Notice it does actually have a plus and minus on there as well. I really should pay attention to the little symbols. So that's what I was doing here. I'd put this diagonally and it makes it so much easier to catch all of these small areas. But honestly, I just embarrassed myself at this point. The machine wasn't even turned on and I pressed the trigger and so it came out with this big blue mess. I then tried to pretend that I'd done it on purpose and that I was just trying to show people how not to do it. That is obviously not true. I'm a dog. But fear not, I did actually work out how to do it. 
I feel like there's a lot to be said of actually just getting a tool out of the box and trying it out and testing it out and seeing how things work. And this was my finished piece. I feel like a kid who's brought home a picture from school. And one of the guys from Wagner said that it was really good and I felt really proud. Craig humoured me with this silly little piece for my TikTok and Instagram reels. I also caught a shot of the set that Craig's built in his workshop. That's been specially built to do filming. And as he was talking, I noticed these two little rolls of pre-taped plastic here. And if you managed to catch one of my recent shorts, you'll know that I bought the wrong size. So the one on the left is the smaller one that you use for skirting boards. And the one on the right is the larger one that you can use on walls. So as you can see from that, what an incredible weekend. I had so much fun and I met so many great people as well. Right now, I want to show you where I'm at with all of my various projects because there's new stuff coming up all the time that I'm wanting to do. And I find it hard to work out how do I announce a new project when it's not quite here yet because then people get excited for it. But I also want people to know what's coming up. So I'm going to tell you right now what I've got going on project wise. Wise. I still haven't finished this wood burner flue. As you can see, I've patched it up because my plastering job was uh, not great. I've uh, patched up all of the holes that were made and so it's pretty much ready for painting. I've left it long enough that the plaster's dried because you'd be surprised how long it actually takes plaster to dry. It's quite a long time. And so I just need to go and paint the plaster and I also need to paint the wooden base and I need to nail that in place because it's still not secured. Um, this room's very messy. That's embarrassing for me. Uh, so that's a big project that I still need to do. I actually was halfway through um, putting insulation in my loft and there was a little bit I hadn't finished, but I was keen to get the content completed that I was doing at the time. And, <laughs> and as such, I still need to go up there and add the last couple of bits of insulation. So my loft is still open. Let me show you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is what my room permanently looks like. This is chaos. Renovating is chaos. But this isn't ideal because obviously this is cold as well. So I'm having to heat my house and all, all the heat is escaping through this little hole. So I need to go up there and finish that. It will probably only take 10 minutes. Um, but when you're short of time, just doing these 10 minute jobs takes a really long time. So these are a couple of jobs I'm going to do. And I need to finish these little jobs before I move on to my next big project, which is going to be the basement room. Before I get onto that, let me give you some more ideas of what I have to fix before I can move on to that. <laughs> next up, right next to it, we have this. I installed this uh, a year or so ago, two years ago, I'm not really sure. And um, I didn't do a great job. I didn't quite know how to do it. So I was experimenting. I was trying to work out how it was done. And I used those plasterboard plugs that screw in. And they screwed in fine and they've supported this for a couple of years but eventually the clothing weight was too much and now oh that doesn't sound good it's all wonky and more specifically it um let me show you with the camera turn around So what's happened there is that the surface area that that has been screwed into is quite small because it's holding quite a lot of weight. Eventually the plasterboard underneath it has failed. So that's what's happened. I need to go in and make some sort of repair to the plasterboard. Um, I tried different solutions in terms of um, the screws that you can get specifically designed for plasterboard, which has like a little bit of metal on the screw that supports it. Those didn't work either. Um, and what I'll probably do is sneak up into the loft because there's a teeny tiny gap in between the plasterboard and the wall and I can actually access it from the loft. So I'm going to get some pieces of wood that are the correct size and I'm going to wedge them in between the plasterboard and the wall so that I'll give it the support it needs. Again, it probably just take me an hour to fix this. I just haven't had time. But you know how much I like to tell you about my mistakes. And so, you know, when I was still learning, I did lots of jobs that didn't come out very well. This is another example. <laughs> I, this is probably the first wall that I ever painted in my house and I didn't know at this point that you had to put a mist coat on before painting the wall and so this didn't have a mist coat and therefore it peeled. This is what happens. But it's a great opportunity for me to produce a video because when I actually go back and repaint this I'll be able to talk through why this happened and it helps people to see if they've got a similar problem. They're like, oh that's what mine looks like. Um, then they'll know it's probably because this has happened. I also just generally want to do a refurb of my bathroom because it's been like that for a couple of years and it's it's due. It's due a refresh. 
I spent about three hours tidying up my basement room about a week or so ago. And this is what it looks like today. In fact, you would have seen it because I put up a three minute time lapse on YouTube of me doing that. I need to level the floor. I also need to finish this fireplace that I started last May and I have to build a stud wall here. So there's some really big jobs to do and there's also loads of stuff I'm going to be able to cover that I think should be really interesting for people. So I'm actually quite looking forward to it, but because it's quite a long project, it's quite a big project, I've been putting off starting it just because the, uh, the sort of like content commitment is quite a lot. So those are just a couple of things that I've been getting ready DIY wise over the last week. And I'm super excited to really get into doing these blogs and start sharing some really interesting insights into my DIY days with you. Bye!